Andridge again with video four of the video blogs for the Darkland Symphony. So um, anyway, uh, tonight what we're going to be talking about, I'm going to give you kind of a glimpse into the writing process. I thought that would be kind of interesting, um, you know, for the students and directors to see. Um, progress where I am on the symphony right now. Um, I have finished the first draft of movements one and two of the suite, which are movements two and three of the symphony. And I am currently working on the last movement of the suite, fourth movement of the symphony, which is called the Queen's Musk. Um, it was called Dance of the Queen, but that's changed. Um, so um, anyway, I, earlier today I finished doing the sketch. I mentioned in one of my previous video blogs that what I do first is kind of roughly sketch out the piece, make sure I've got the form like I want it, and then I go back and start orchestrating it. So um, last time we saw what it was like when... Um, you know, the sketch versus the finished product. So what I thought we would do today is, um, and again, something I've never done, so um, it's a little bit revealing, but you know, that's what we're here, that's why we're learning, um, because some of you may choose to become uh, composers, and this might, you know, help inspire you, or at least inform some of what you do. Um, again, I do want to give a caveat that the way I do things is not necessarily the way every composer does things. Um, everybody should develop their own style and set of tools, but still you might find a few of the things that I do helpful or interesting and, and that's what I hope is the case. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm actually going to screen cap myself working on the piece and I'm going to narrate while I'm doing that, kind of just my thoughts out loud, what I'm thinking while I'm doing some of this. I'm not going to do the whole piece because I mean that would take hours, but um, I'm going to take just like a small section and show you kind of what I do to do that. Um, to give you some information on the process I kind of use, I mean, the first thing is uh, the software I use is Finale. Um, I realize, you know, some directors and students out there might be using Sibelius, which is perfectly fine. I mean, Sibelius is a great program. Um, I've just used Finale since the mid-90s, and so I'm very familiar with it, and it's what I'm comfortable with. Um, any, I mean, either of the programs is good, and, and I think, you know, a lot of directors and composers will argue over which is better, which is just a stupid argument. It's like arguing over your favorite hammer. So whichever one works best for you, that's what you should use. Um, but anyway, um, so I, we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you Finale. Um, some of the things I do, I have um, done what is called hot keying, which is where I program keys into my, uh, you know, keyboard so that uh, the process is a lot faster. Um, if you ever have questions about that, directors, um, please just email me. I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty busy, but uh, I do try to take time to get pe back with people. Might be a couple days later to three or four days later, depending on how busy my schedule is. But I do always try to get back and help answer questions. Um, the other thing I want to say about my process is what I do is I try to um, split a piece down into smaller manageable sections. Uh, much the way that a lot of uh, band directors uh, rehearse their bands, like they won't rehearse the whole piece all at once, um, at least not all the time. You know, they might start with that, kind of like I did, you know, I start with sketching out the whole piece, but then I break it down into sections and really focus on those sections. Um, one of the reasons I do that is it's just kind of an excellence thing with me that I've learned throughout the years, not just with composing, but with preparing musical performances, um, working on a piece of art, um, cleaning my house. I mean, just it's kind of this philosophy of excellence is that, just keep in mind that any big job, any big project is nothing but a bunch of small projects put together. That's all it is. And it's, I know that may seem like a, you know, kind of simplistic thing to say, but it is really, I've found it at least to be really um, inspiring and encouraging um, for when I start on a project because it's really easy to get overwhelmed. Um, just, I mean, just to give you an idea, like right now, the, um, the, the, uh, movement that I'm working on is um, 147 measures. I probably will not be that long when it's done because there are some sections that are going to repeat and right now I've got them written out twice uh, just because I'm kind of playing around with them a little bit to see what I want to do is like second time only. But so there's 147 measures right now with, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, staves. So if you think about that, um, it's not even 147 measures. What I'm really having to um, make deci decisions for is, let's see, 147 times 17. Um, I'm actually having to make decisions for 2,499 measures. Um, that's a big number. That's a lot of measures for one person to write. But, um, you know, a lot of the things are repeated, um, even within 
staves, which, you know, working with a notation program makes easier. And also, like I said, I don't think of the whole piece at once um, after I get past that sketch. I break it down to small sections and I just work on those and focus on making those good, then move on to the next. And then when I've got the whole piece done, I go back and, and you know, go through the whole thing and make sure that it's all tied together and cohesive um, and working like it should. So that's the method that I use. Um, so we'll see a little bit of that now. Um, I'm going to orchestrate the, um, the, just um, the introduction. And depending on how fast that goes, maybe the first strain as well. Um, you know, so you can just kind of see what my process for taking a basic idea and pulling it out into orchestration will be. Um, again, I'm just going to be narrating my thoughts as they occur to me. So if I sound like an idiot talking to myself, perhaps I am. But um, at any rate, these are the thoughts that are occurring to me as I'm, uh, you know, orchestrating this piece. So I hope you find it informative. So let's see how we write a piece. All right. So here we have the um, sketch of the next movement, the Queen's Mask. Um, you know, again, uh, movement four of the symphony, movement three of the suite. And um, you can see that the score looks very, very bare. Well, that's going to be changing really quickly. Now, again, like I said, I tend to focus on small sections at a time. So what I'm really going to focus on now is this section over here from measures, uh, if you can see the little cursor, measures one to eight. Um, so we're just going to, you know, really focus in on those measures and bring them to life a little bit. Um, now, I will say that these first eight measures are going to be pretty spare because this um, particular movement starts... Uh, you know, pretty sparse and then gets fuller and fuller. Um, so this won't take super, super long. Um, so what we've got now so far in the first set measures, my sketch is just this kind of waltz feel. Let's listen to that. Turned up the volume a little bit there for you. So that's the section we're going to be bringing to life right now, this section right here. So not, you know, not a whole lot of, a uh, lot there right now. Um, first thing, obviously, is I want to move the bass line um, up into the other, you know, typical bass instruments, um, which will be the baritone saxophone and the bass clarinet. So I'm just going to copy that up there, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, and uh, make sure that it, um, you know, that, that we have the proper basses covered. Um, so we've got that so far. <laughs> Um, now, one thing I will say, I don't really like the brightness of these parts. Unfortunately, those instruments can sound just as good right there. Um, so we're going to move those notes down um, every time they occur. So I actually have um, a function hotkeyed where I can just move the octaves like that. So let's see if that sounds a little better. <laughs> Yep, I definitely like that better. I like the deepness on that second beat as opposed to, you know, um, sounding so bright. Um, so that's that's good for the bass line, and, you know, we've got it at mezzo forte. Uh, now, down here I've got the trombones um, and euphoniums uh, kind of split right now. You know, I put in two notes at a time just because it's easier so I can get everything in like I want it. Um, but I actually don't need this on both lines because we have a trombone line and then a euphonium bassoon trombone two line. So I'm going to, um, excuse me, wrong tool. I'm going to um, use this to uh, explode the music outwards, which means I'm going to separate these out a little bit. Um, so we're going to do that. And that's a very useful tool in finale. One thing you'll notice, however, is that I really shouldn't have slurs here because we're staying on the same pitch. So I'm going to erase those slurs really quick and just put in some tenuto markings to make sure that we are um, giving the correct articulation at all moments. Um, so we've got that split now. I'm going to put that euphonium part also in the, um, oops, I forgot to measure. Hang on just a second. Um, going to um, put that up in the tenor sax as well, just to give some reinforcement, um, you know, for typical instruments. Um, so now, so far we have... <laughs> So as you can see, we're getting a little fuller instrumentation now. I'm not going to have anything for the flutes in the first part. Well, actually, yes, we are. I'm sorry. I remember what I wanted now. Um, but uh, first, we're going to add something that I didn't have in the sketch. Um, in the French horn, we're going to add the dearest Dies Irae theme that has been going throughout the entire symphony. That's the... Excuse me. So 
we're going to add that in just to give a little nod to the rest of the symphony. I think it'll sound really good in horns. So we're going to do that. Uh, we'll put a mezzo forte on it. Um, and then we're going to copy that up into the um, alto sax. Um, so now we've got... And you can hear there's a little dissonance here um, happening between the, um, the D here and the E flat down lower in the, um, in the concert pitch. Um, so, you know... Let's hear that again, Yep. Yeah, I, I don't really mind it. I think the dissonance is fine, especially given the dark nature of this piece, so I'm going to keep that in for now. Um, of course, I may change my mind later. Um, and now we're going to add in a flute um, trill on the last note just to give it a little sense of suspense. So adding in our flute note there, and we're going to add in our trill, which actually I have a hot key for. Um, so adding in the trill there and we'll go ahead and put that in the oboe as well. Um, again, just to reinforce it, you know, one of my goals with this piece is to give it that, um, grade two orchestration, but also, you know, still make it sound symphonic, but also make it accessible for smaller groups. So when I can double, I will. And the only reason I'm not going to double in the clarinets is because they have the melody coming up and I want to make sure I'm spreading the colors around the score. So let's see how this sounds thus far. Yeah. And I think I want to give a little more color to that DSR run, so we're going to put it down in the um, chimes. So. so, hmm, I wonder if I wanted that deep or maybe up an octave. Let's see here. Let's try it up the active and just see how it sounds. Yeah, I think I like that better. I like it, it gives a little more articulation to the um, to the overall sound. Uh, one thing I'm starting to hear too that I actually may not like uh, these notes that happen on beat three in the second part of the bass. Um, I don't know. I'm not not totally sold on those because I think they take away from the answering in the tenor voice. Um, so let me um, try it for a couple measures without it, and I can undo this in, in a second if I need to. Um, but I just want to see, you know, maybe that doesn't need to be there. And that happens sometimes. You know, sometimes my sketch, I'll go back and, like, and I'll just be like, hmm, you know, that doesn't really need to be there. So let's see what this is like. Hmm. I'm a little torn. We'll come back to that in a second. I'm not going to get obsessed about it right now because I've got plenty else to do. Um, all right, so um, you know I've got all this wind stuff going on. I like everything that's going on so far. I think I'm going to add in um, a uh, a couple of percussion things uh, just you know just to have them in. Um, I think we're going to add in uh, right now. We're going to add in a um, tambourine part. I'm going to put that in percussion one for now, but um, that may end up changing um, just because it just might end up changing. Um, let's see, I am on the wrong sound, so let me find my sound real quick. Um, interesting thing about percussion and finale, um, sometimes on different sound fonts, the sounds you want are in different places, so sometimes I forget where they are and I have to find them real quick, so thank you for indulging me. So we got our tambourine sound. I'm gonna put it in with the, um, with the, uh, the tenor voices on their answering part. Um, so we're going to um, add that on a roll to emphasize that longer note. Um, and let's just see how this that this sounds. Uh, let me copy this out real quick. Get rid of those extra mezzo fortes. And this is what we got so far. <laughs> I change up the tambourine part just a little bit for um, the last measure just so we get a little bit of a difference and we'll put some accents on it so that we get um, all right um, then I think we're gonna put some bass drum in and 
I may put that bass drum on that note that I did have in the um, in the voice of, the low voices originally. I liked the impact. I just didn't necessarily like the tone. It was starting to get a little on my on my nerves. So uh, so we'll see if this is any better. Hmm, I don't know. That may be just a touch too heavy for that section, so I think we're going to take that back out. And then we're just going to put wrists underneath there for now. Um, although that may change later again, you know, this, this is the first draft. Um, just like those were first drafts and I, you know, I will go back and, and see if anything needs changing up, but I'm just going to put rest there for now. I think that was just a little too heavy. I think I like just the sound of the winds, uh, going on with there. Um, similarly, I don't think I really want any timpani in right yet. Um, just because I think it'll be a little too heavy. I want this to sound dark, but light. Um, I know that may sound like a contradiction, but I want a kind of a darker wind sound, but a lightness to the attack. And I'm afraid the bass drum and timpani would just be a little too much there. So let's hear this one more time. All right, and yeah, I like that. Um, last thing I think I'm gonna put in, um, I'm going to put in a suspended cymbal roll. Um, let me get back to the correct spot. And, um, Oops, wrong layer. And I'm gonna zoom in just real quick so we can make sure this looks right. Add the roll sign. Oops, that's not the roll sign. Let me get in the articulation tool. Add the roll sign. Um, and then add in dynamic instructions as well as a um, reverb mark so that we know to let that ring. And so now we've got this. Trying to make sure this is lined up and looks nice. All right, so um, this is the first section now. We've got uh, the first eight measures orchestrated. I mean, obviously there's not a lot on here yet because that first section is very simple. But um, you can see how, you know, just taking that, those simple ideas and kind of expanding on them and making sure that everything is where you want it can, can produce good results. So again, here's this first eight measures. And I think I'm going to add one more thing. I think I'm going to add a trumpet uh, chord um, just to add to that kind of mournful quality. I want a pretty dissonant chord, so let's see here. Hmm. That might be challenging because we've got that DS area thing in the same octave. Oh, well, let's see how it sounds. We can, that's the nice thing about this, uh, directors and students, we can always erase. And I don't want this to be as loud as everything else. I want it to just be kind of this background sound um, that, you know, is kind of heightening the tension just a little bit. I don't even want it to go to the same level as everything else. I just want it to go up to mezzo piano, and then we'll decrescendo back out so let's see how that sounds this may sound horrible but you know that's part of the fun we got to see how this all this stuff fits together yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not I, I like the idea but i'm not a big fan because i think that interrupts the clarity of this line so um nah we're not gonna do that so what now uh, last thing is i'm gonna just make a few adjustments to some articulations and uh, and uh, expressions just to make sure that the score will look nice. I mean, obviously I'm in what's called scroll view now. If we go over to page view, you know, we see things like this and we can zoom in with that where it'll show, show you what the score will actually look like. But I always start here um, just so I can see the, you know, more of the piece and kind of get it locked in. And then later I go back and do a really thorough typesetting job. All right, well, we're gonna move on to the next section, um, just the next eight measures, um, and that'll probably be the last I'll do for this video, although, I mean, obviously, I've got my work cut out for me tonight and the next few days. But, you know, that's that's how, how this goes. We just take a section at a time. So the next section is a little more complete in terms of, you know, I've already um, done a bit of orchestrating here uh, when I was writing it, but, you know, it's still not complete, so I need to um, go through and really try to complete this. Um, so before I even listen, well, okay, let's go ahead and listen to it. Um, let's hear this. Oops, uh, hang on, let me 
fix a couple of things. There we go. All right, so that's what I've got now for the first like phrase, um, you know, from measure nine to measure 16. Um, I can already say with uh, certainty, I don't want anything in the flute or oboe, so I'm pretty much done with those lines as far as this is concerned. Um, I obviously need to have a starting um, dynamic for the clarinet who will have the melody. Um, and we're going to uh, do some articulation here. Um, so um, I want this to be slurred at the front, so ta, and then um, slurred in the next two. So the, we had, so I do want it articulated, you know, on the downbeat. So we have ta, 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 ta. So I've got to make sure that you know I go through and actually do that so that my intentions are understood. And I actually think I don't want those. I want those to be tenuto. So that we have ta, ta, ta. All right, so I'm sorry I was singing that to myself. I should have been talking out loud about what I was doing. So I'm gonna move that down a little bit. And uh, one thing you may notice uh, from the other scores to this one, I actually separated the clarinet one and two part. They have been together on all the other scores for this piece, but I think I'm gonna be using the two groups so differently in this. I preemptively you know, separated them. If it turns out that I'm going to combine them, um, then I'll do that later. And then that's actually a very easy process. Um, one other thing I want to change on this clarinet part, I think this release here is just a little too late. Um, so I, I'm going to change the release to this moment right here so that we get a little more clarity of this trumpet entrance um, so that we hear the two colors separately. You know, one thing I found with a lot of band composers is they tend to overscore things, meaning they have too much going on at once so that you really lose the clarity of what you're intending to do. And I mean, I've certainly been guilty of that in the past before. It's one of those things you learn the more you do it. Um, so now that I've got this melody line, I want it in both clarinet parts. Um, and I'm going to um, have it in the... Uh, and actually, do I want it? No, actually I don't because later I'm going to be crossing the break. And I want to consciously make sure that the, um, the second clarinet does not cross the break since we're at the grade two level. But I am going to put it in the saxophones for, for both saxophones. Um, that actually reminds me, I need to go back here and put in um, a symbol called an adui that um, means that, you know, we have two saxophone parts, but they're both playing the same thing here. So that's the designation for that. Um, so I think I'm going to leave that second part blank because I may want them for something else here in a little bit. Um, because, I mean, I can always come back and add them in later if I have to. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to leave them out for now. So we'll just have the altos one and two and the clarinets on the melody. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and orchestrate out my, um, my tenor voices like I did before using that really nice explode tool that is very handy. And just like before, I need to come down and erase the, um, the, uh, slurs and put tenuto markings, so, you know, to make sure that, that we're just, uh, correct from a notation perspective. Um, so again, moving that up there, uh, let's see here, trumpets, I know that's all I'm going to want them on, so I'm just going to put that right there. Um, French horn will be coming in later. This is one of those sections that I'm going to be going back and making a first time, second time kind of thing. Um, so I'm just not, I mean, I'm going to bring in the uh, French horn and uh, maybe and second clarinet uh, together later. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what we, we will do there. So, um, this is what we've got so far. Oh, forgot to take care of that saxophone. Yeah, I like that release much better because this really brings attention to this moment. Um, you know, so that the audience is hearing exactly what I'm intending them to hear. Um, all right, so percussion-wise, um, I think we're going to continue this um, uh, tambourine uh, figure. So I'm going to just copy four measures of it and move it over here and get then get rid of those uh, um, extra mezzo fortes. So that gives us this so far. <laughs> Very good. 
so it's sounding good so far. Um, let's see here. Um, I think I want to add a timpani thing, um, just going from a G to a D uh, at the end to give it a little more push into that next measure so that we have. Well, the G doesn't really sound right. Hmm. All right, maybe we'll do it with the, uh, the bass room instead since it's non-tonal. Um, so let me go ahead and, I know I'm gonna want that uh, tambourine part over here. Um, minus I'm gonna want that so that it matches the rhythm of the trumpets. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in this bass drum note here uh, just to uh, add, like I said, a little extra push into that next moment. <laughs> All right, they're not bad. So let's let's hear this. Let's hear from the front so far. So there you have it. Um, I know it was kind of a long video, but I mean, composing takes time. Um, so um, I hope you found it informative and helpful. Um, you know, in the comments below uh, in, in, you know, on the YouTube channel, if you want to leave a comment, um, ask any questions or anything, I'll be happy to answer them when I can. Um, but anyway, so the piece is coming along really well. I, I, um, you know, I have a plan for the ending. Um, my goal is is to finish up most of the orchestration tomorrow, Monday the, the 30th, um, and then um, finish up the rest of the orchestration on that by Tuesday afternoon, um, and then spend some time Tuesday late afternoon and evening kind of going over all of the first drafts and doing, you know, kind of another analysis of them and, you know, on my own and, and uh, just seeing kind of where it is and what needs to be changed, what needs to you know go from there. Um, because we are only uh, 16, well, 17 counting today, but tomorrow 16 days away from the deadline. Um, and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling like I'm in a good spot right now. You know, the, the main bulk of the work will be done in two days, and then it just comes down to fine tuning. Um, I'm actually gonna contact a couple of my composer friends. Um, not gonna say who yet, because I wanna make sure they agree to it, um, to, uh, give me some feedback on the piece and uh, just kind of get, you know, another set of ears because sometimes you get so close to something, you just need a fresh perspective. Um, so that's just where we are in the project. Um, I'm having fun with this piece. Um, you know, I hope that comes through. Um, I'm, I'm not a super loud person, at least not when I'm connected. Those of you that may have had me for an honor band before, I get very loud when I'm honor band connecting just because I get really excited. But, um, you know, but I'm having a blast working on this piece. It's kind of fun to just run around in my imagination. And I hope some of these little, you know, behind the scenes looks at some of the composition, or at least my composition process, uh, are helpful. I hope they're educational and um, I hope they're interesting. Um, so, anyway, um, like I said, feel free to comment on this video or any of the others. Um, feel free to share. Um, I mean, I'm not shy, so there's no reason for you to be. And, um, you know, as always, peace, love, and music.